This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Xavier Miller, um, who's probably still got a smile on his face from uh, a wonderful night in Gibraltar. <laughs> rumble on the Rock certainly was a rumble, and it, uh, it ended in success for your man. Absolutely, man. Yeah, f fantastic performance. Worked hard for it. Worked really hard. So really, really proud of him. And proud of Dillian and Youssef. Yeah, they both really performed really well. So, yeah, happy, man. Yeah, we'll talk about um, Youssef's performance uh, in a bit. But, I mean, there's no one more than Dillian and, and the team that knew that when we say his career was on the line, so you might think that was a little bit, not you, but people might think that was a kind of a, a little bit harsh in saying that. But the pressures of him not winning this fight were, were almost unbearable to think about. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's had to take on a lot. Um, you know, it, I mean, for the, first, I mean, the first, very first camp when I went out in March last year, uh, you know, we were getting ready for, I think, I think it was around May or something like that. Then the fight got delayed and then delayed again. Finally got to the fight in August. You know, it didn't go our way. After about 11 days, 11, 12 days, you know, I flew straight back out, straight back into camp. And we've been working so hard. And, uh, you know, I've been with Dillian a little, a little while now um, since uh, I think the Maris Wack fight, or just actually just before that. Um, so, you know, we've, um, we've become very close, you know, so um, and spent a lot of time riding each other. And, uh, you know, it's taken a while for things to, to, to settle. It, it does, um, you know, from a coaching aspect, it takes years to build a fight up because I've done it over and over again. And, um, you know, it's, I, just, I was just so proud on Saturday because I knew the sacrifices that he had made. He had made a lot of sacrifices. Like, people could never quite understand what he had to deal with to get ready for that fight uh, mentally. It was a long, long camp. From the outside, we were kind of looking at this fight that, we, you know, we know the, the way the first fight materialised, that Dillian was in complete control of the fight and... I think that's what led to more of the shock of, of the knockout. But with someone like Povetkin, that's always um, a, an aspect of Povetkin's game that's going to be dangerous. But going into this fight, we saw the way Dillian approached round one. And we heard him say numerous times after the fight that, you know, he wanted to do it in round one, etc. which I suppose any professional boxer, if given the situation, no one wants to do unnecessary rounds of risk yeah. and taking further damage to your body. But... Was the plan from, from your side, was it A, or was it the opening, if you see it, take him out early, or was it specifically round one, let's try and get the job done? No, well, we, we, or the, me personally, we weren't really looking to go out to get him out in the first round, but to make a statement, to make a good start. You know, um, I wanted Dylan to be in front of him, um, you know, use his jab really well, you know, and Dylan was doing a lot of the things that, you know, it wasn't just this camp. Since the time I've joined Dillian, you know, we've had a conversation. There's certain things that I would have liked him to add to his game. Um, these things take time. But on Saturday, it all came together. It all looked like all the things we'd worked on, it was coming naturally. It wasn't forced. It was coming naturally. Um, his controlling range really well. His jab was sharp from the very beginning. You know, the power shots were there. And, uh, you know, once he hurt his man, you know, he was on him. And um, he just never really never eased up, did he? he? Just, you know, he just kept doing what he was doing until he got him out. And so I was just really, really pleased with the performance. And it was just a big relief for everybody because, you know, as a team, we've had to make a lot of sacrifices, you know, um, over the last, last few months. You know, people have missed Christmases and so on and so forth and missed, you know, seeing their family. Um, it's been hard, missed birthdays. It's, it's not been easy. Um, hasn't been easy. But, um, you know, me and Dillian spoke and listen, I said, listen, you know, we've just got to get on with it. You know, we, we need to bleed over here. We need to get him over here. And uh, if people got to make sacrifices, they can make sacrifices. This is professional boxing. You have to give 100%. You've got to be fully committed or else you're not going to make it in the sport. Um, so me and Dillian understood that. And, uh, you know, we talk regularly. We, we were on the same page. We knew what, we, we knew what had to be done. But at the end of the day, you know, Dillian's the one that's got to carry all this pressure. He's got all the, you know, the weight of the world on his shoulders going into that fight because he knew if it goes wrong here, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long road back. But, you know, I always knew that he'd get Povetkin out. I, I was very confident the first fight 
you know, that shot just came from nowhere. We were doing a job on Vivekin. Um, but, you know, this is, this is boxing. This can happen. And you've got, to, you've got to believe in your team and be consistent. You know, it's, we just built, we built together. You know, it was a disappointment last time. And this time we celebrate together. Talk to me about the influence of the shadow in the corner and how effective that was to have Harold Knight there. We, you know, we spoke, we've spoken about a lot before the fight. We all know of Harold's involvement with, with Lennox Lewis and crucially kind of Lennox putting a couple of results right uh, after back, losses, yes. Yeah, after losses, yeah. So um, talk to me about his influence and also kind of the decision to to bring him in for the camp and and for the corner on the on the night. To, to, from 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 April around April May last year, it was always the idea to bring someone else in on board to work alongside me because I run these the boxing club. You know, I'm, I'm a head coach along with the other head coach here. And I've got a whole team here. I've got my strength conditioners. I've got coaches that work under us. I've got a team. So when I, had to, when I went out to Portugal, I went out on my own. Not everyone's in a privileged position like me where I can afford to just pick up my gear and say I'm going to go and go to a training camp in another country. Not everyone can do that. The other guys in my gym are not in that position. So, you know, we spoke and I said, well, I need to build a team over here because Dillian now lives in Portugal. You know, I can't bring the guys from my gym here. And, but they've been with me for years. So I've got, I've got people that I'm very comfortable with, you know, in my gym. And these relationships take time. So, um, you know, bringing in Harold, you know, he's been there before. He's been there and done it. Um, you know, he worked as a second, obviously, under Manny. Um, against, uh, and he was obviously part of a team, one of the best heavyweights ever. And uh, he, more, than, more than anything, he's a very positive influence. You know, everything I say, he always reinforces it. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's something familiar with me and Harold because, you know, when I first got into boxing when I was a kid, my, uh, my coach was actually from Detroit, but he was, uh, he was born in Malta. So the style of boxing um, has always been, you know, unique. And uh, because obviously Harold is from the US, like a lot of the conversations we have, you know, we kind of like, sometimes we finish each other's sentences, we test each other all the time because, because of our boxing knowledge, we go back and forth all the time. So it was good to have another boxing person in the camp. Um, so, but, you know, on the day again, you can notice in the corner, you know, we already spoke about how we're going to run the corner, you know, and how, you, and, and it went exactly as planned. Um, you know, obviously the idea of the instructions and obviously he just reinforced it. And if you've got anything to add, you're a guy with experience, if you see anything, add on. And it was the same. If you notice every round, it was the same with the same format. So everything was like, you know, and it was good because, Obviously, before the fight, Harold had been out with us in Portugal for quite a while because the fight got delayed. So we had even more time to gel. Um, you know, we trained together in the morning. You know, we're always together in the evening. And, uh, you know, we talked throughout the day. So it was, good. it was good to have him around. And as I say, in my gym, I've got two older guys. Um, you know, they're two former All-Stars coaches, Ken Thomas and um, Earl Austin. And they were All-Stars for years. Um, these guys are always around me. They always support me. And uh, so it was good to have someone like that, you know, out in Portugal, because obviously boxing wise, it was just me. But um, yeah, I, I, love, I love the chemistry between us. And, uh, you know, ho hopefully longer can, can continue. You know, Dillian's um, in a good place now. And um, yeah, I think, honestly, he's just a very positive person. You know, he's like the life of the party, Harold. You know, he's always smiling. Me, I'm, ver I'm very reserved. You know, I'm uh, normally in my own space. Um, but when it comes to boxing, you know, obviously uh, I'm a different character. So, yeah, it was, it was good. I suppose with anyone kind of coming in in that situation, we know um, for the previous fight that Dave Caldwell was brought in, obviously, for the, uh, the original Povetkin fight. But I suppose until on the night and as much as you guys can gel during a camp, that kind of crucial corner work and not having too many co uh, contradicting things being thrown at Dillian that you're all on the <laughs> same page you don't know how that works until exactly. it like actually comes and goes exactly and honestly full respect to Dave Colwell because when I actually got to got in, into the bubble um that's the first time I actually officially met him you know Dillian Dillian knows him so Dillian was quite comfortable with having him as a second I said listen I said you know listen it's good to have another boxing person in the corner um you know I'm 
I'm old school. You know, the guys that I've grown up watching in the corner, there is sometimes two, three experienced people in the corner. Um, that's normal to me. I know some of the fight fans don't understand that and they read into things a different way which they shouldn't. Maybe it's because they just don't understand. Um, you know, that's, it, and it's not a knock against them. If you're actually into the sport of boxing, you would understand how it works. Um, you know, guys in the corner have always had guys that they've trust around them, whether it's a cut man, a second, whatever. Their teams are usually the same. I mean, sometimes when they actually even get a new boxer, they'll bring their team with them. It's not unusual. But to some people, it's just, I don't know, they just didn't, didn't understand it. But yeah, honestly, even in the first fight, you know, like I said, people have always going to have something to say if you don't get the result. But if you watch the first fight and watch me and Dave in the corner, again, he was giving Dylan the right advice. He was reinforcing what I was saying. He was adding bits on here and there. He was vocal. You know, he was helping. He helped out in the changing room before, the, before we came out. He was helping in the corner. You know, he's a good coach. You know, he's been around a long time. So it, it's very easy for me to work with boxing people. That's not a problem. Um, you know, obviously, if, if, if that did not happen in the fifth round, no one would have anything to say at all about what was going in the corner. But people start to drag things and they find things to talk about because it didn't go your way. Um, that was, you know, that was never an issue for us. You know, we, we, I, just, I say we because we didn't get the result. We just made a mistake. You know, we were doing a lot of the right things. And I did say straight after the fight, Dillian can look a lot better than that. He had, people have, have yet to see exactly how good he can look. You know, he can do so many different things. So, yeah, you know, obviously, I'm just very I'm grateful to Dave on the day because, like I said, you know, you get to the bubble. and I've only known Dave maybe two or three days before the fight. And we got on, got on fine. I mean, when you've been doing it long enough, it shouldn't be difficult to be drafted in and do a job. You're there to do a job and that's it. And, and, and he called me the next day, said, listen, Zav, sorry, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the result we wanted. It's, he's, just a, he's just a very cool guy. So, I'm, you know, respect to Dave Colwell, seriously. Mm. Um, so, 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 moving forward now, Zav, I mean, we know Dillian's was always going to be asked a million and one questions about what's next. You know, you mentioned <laughs> he's always going to be asked a situation regarding... Um, Joshua Fury, etc., and he mentioned Trevor Bryan, and he was asked about Wilder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I mean, judging where we are in the year now, we're just touching into April. We could effectively, um, effectively fight another twice this year. Um, yeah. Whether that's possible in the climate or not, I don't know. But I mean, what is realistic for him next? I think he could definitely fight another couple of times. I mean, listen, he, we are. I mean, since we moved out to Portugal we've got used to being in the gym on a, like all the time. Like it's just normal now. Uh, there's no long breaks in between. You know, we just, we just enjoy working. You know, we're always working on something. Me and Dylan are always talking about boxing. We're working on something, just improving our game, you know? And um, I, I'd be happy if we can get another two times this week. Oh, um, this, uh, this year, sorry. It's obviously it's frustrating because, you know, the whole Joshua Fury, you know, two fight deal and so on and so forth. So I, I just want Dylan to get a title shot, like like everybody else, like all his fans, you know, everyone who supported him for years. It's frustrating for everybody. We just want to see this guy get his shot. I mean, how many more good fighters does he have to be? You know, he's got one of the best resumes in boxing, full stop. You know, he's been a lot of good guys and um, he deserves his shot. And uh, But we'll do what we have to do to maintain. You know, that's a word that I use regularly. We'll, we'll do what you have to do to maintain. We'll get ready for the next fight. He'll call me and tell me, listen, right, got a fight day, back into camp, and we'll just keep going. Dylan is young for a heavyweight, so no one needs to panic. He's got a long way to go. Um, you know, heavyweights fight a lot older than what they used to, uh, longer into, the, into their career. And, um, yeah, we want that title shot, but when it comes, it comes. Nothing happens before it's time. Nothing. You say he look. Uh, you say he is young for heavyweight. That is true, but he don't look young for heavyweight. He looks. He looks older than you, Zav. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to strangle you. Don't you watch this and strangle me? Absolutely. Well, I, hope, I, hope, I, I hope you can run. Yeah, I know. I've got that ten days in between. He has to come here, and you know what I mean. So, <laughs> um, but how do you like the Wilder fight for him? Yeah, good fight. Good fight. Um, you know. I, I've said from the beginning, to me, Dillian beats them all. I just think, I just think Dillian can do more. They're, they're all very good at one thing in particular. To me, Dillian is very, very versatile. Very. You know, he works up and down really well. 
got a very good jab, underrated jab. I think he's got the best jab. And, um, you know, Dillian can fight inside, can fight outside, and he can rough it up if he has to, can box if he has to. You know, he's a Rubik's Cube. It's not going to be, it'd be difficult to manage Dillian in that ring. And I think they know that. Uh, so, um, you know, they're not just going to open the door for him. Uh, we're going to have to kick it down. And, um, yeah, any of those fights are very interesting to me. As long as we you get, you reach our end goal and that's to get a world title shot. Yeah, look, it's interesting how this year's going to play out. There's so many different heavyweight scenarios. There's so many potential fights that could be made. Let's see if they do get made. But um, for Dillian, I think, to kind of finally erase the memory of uh, what happened at fight camp in August was very, like I said, crucial, not just for his career, but for his his own mental state of mind. It was something that was obviously going to play on his mind up until, you know, he, he produced the goods on... on uh, uh, on Saturday night, so it was it was good to see. So, however, this year plans out now. Whoever it may be, uh, it will be. Yeah, definitely. I'm. Mean, we're ready to like. Listen, he's, hasn't he always just fought anybody? You know, it's uh, it's not going to change, is it? That's it's, that's his mentality. Mm. That's his mentality, and that's why he's you know uh, box office fight. That's the reason he is that because everybody wants to tune in and see the Dillian White show. So um, yeah, he's he's still he's always going to take on decent challenges, good challenges. That's just the kind of person that he is. And um, you know, whatever decision he decides, I'll, I'm I'm fully behind him. I'm glad you and um, Harold got to to say your bit on on Sky straight after the fight as well, because I remember speaking to you about an hour before the fight. And uh... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna forget what you said, honestly. You know, when you came up to me, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was about an hour before when you said, "Listen, I hope when Dillian wins." You know, I hope you'll get the recognition. And um, honestly, I just, I'm not going to forget that. I mean, it's just always that we all we all had a strong feeling it was going to be a good night. Could, the vibe was just there. You know, from I think from the time we actually started the the, the camp after that after the first fight, you know, we just just tunnel vision, just ready, man. We just yeah, you know, those those are the kind of things that's good to you know say to somebody when you're about to go into a big fight. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's true though because listen, that. The critics and and the public, which everyone's entitled to their own opinion, which is which is fair enough. But they're they're kind of quick to pinpoint uh, various things when things go wrong. So and to some degree, yourself and Harold and the team would have had to have take it had it not gone your way. But on the flip side, if you're going to get it right, which you did in spectacular fashion, then you deserve the the credit that comes with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Um... You know, I know a lot of people are only seeing me now, but as you know, Cooper, and I've, you've seen me on the circuit for years. Um, you know, I've spent years building an amateur club and building those guys up to turn pro. And that's, that's always meant more to me than anything else, was I want to be known for building, for, for build, building fighters. You know, there's a lot of good coaches out there, but, you know, a lot of them haven't, they didn't build an amateur gym. You know, we actually started our own amateur gym and competed with all the big clubs um, in the country. Um, you know, I spent years um, building pros um, and you guys are getting to see, you know, a couple of them now. But that's what coaching is about. That's, you say, my mentality is, is, is from the old school. You know, I don't come screaming and shouting about what I do and what I've done. You know, I want my fighters to do that. You know, if my fighters look good, then I look good, you know. And um, that's just the kind of character that I am. Mm. And, um, you know, just, I've, got, I've got such a good... I've got such a good uh, stable of fighters coming through now that um, you know I'm just excited about the next the next stage. You know um, the other head coach here looks after them at the moment, and uh, you know some of them are ready to actually turn pro now. The others are going to spend a bit with the amateurs, but um, yeah, I've been here a long, 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 long time, and um, yeah, you know just uh, more than ready, you know, more than ready. Let's uh, let's finish off by talking about uh, someone who I very much enjoyed spending the few days in Gibraltar with in. Uh, Mr. Yusuf Kamari, who's uh, an excellent talker. I personally had never seen Yusuf fight before the other day, but um, he took on someone who we know is as game as they come in Kane Baker. We've seen him yeah. pull off more than the odd upset over the years, especially in his last fight. Hence the reason he was there, Kane Baker, mm -hmm. the other day. But a very uh, impressive stoppage win for Kamari against Kane Baker. Absolutely. And... Um... Everything went to plan. Everything. I mean, Yusef has, Yusef has probably been 
he's been one of the, one of the best small ball fighters for the past three years. You know, every time he fights, he's the best fighter on the card. He's, his performances are always the best. You know, he's always looked a cut above the rest of the guys. Um, you know, I've, I've had Yusef since he was about 15, 16 years old. Um, so, you know, the last few couple of years, you know, he was with the amateurs, in, in the amateurs with me. Um, you know, he won a Southern Era belt at, um, for, uh, in the amateurs uh, for England boxing. Um, we went to Denmark, went to Germany. Even when he did go to Denmark and box for London, you know, he got fight of the night. Um, you know, he's won box cups. You know, he's just a very, very good fighter. But um, he's one of the very rare fighters that I've talked to box like myself. Um, he's the only, only the second person I've talked to box like that because obviously you have to, when you, get, when you do take on a boxer, you know, you have to work on their strengths. And I've only met a couple that can actually, that can actually beat, that can actually teach the style of boxing that I was taught. Mm. Um, so that relaxed style where he can roll shots off the shoulder, works the body well, hold ring center. He's just, he's just a very, very confident fighter, you know? And, then, and when you've had someone that long, I mean, he's 24 now. So we've been together for about nine years. Um, and this is what I mean about coaches, you know, you need to be respected for building guys as well as having guys who are already established on, on, on the circuit, you know, or having world-class guys, you know, you need to be able to build fighters as well. It's, it's, the foundation's important. So, um, yeah, I was really, really pleased with his performance. I, I'm actually a fan of Kane Baker, to be honest with you, because when he, his last couple of fights, obviously, uh, the fight camp and then the fight before, you know, he's, just, he's got a fan-friendly style. I like his story. And, um, you know, when he got the last victory, I was so happy watching it on TV. He's just a very cool guy. And obviously, I was with the bub in the bubble with him as well with, uh, when John Hardy was fighting. And he's just, just a really nice guy to talk to. And he gives everything. Um, but I knew, I knew what Yusuf's going to do to him. Um, you know, Yusuf uh, is levels above that. And um, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen next with Yusuf. But, yeah, very good fighter. Well, like I said, it was a successful night. Not for the whole of Team White. We know, obviously, that um, Eric, Eric. And, and, and Chris suffered defeats, but, um, you know, and I'm sure they'll both bounce back from those. But um, I think overall you'd have to put it down as a, a, a successful night for, for Team White. So congratulations to all you guys. No, thank you very much. And obviously, yeah, a disappointment, especially for uh, Chris. Uh, again, I've known Chris from the amateurs. He's just was always a class, classy operator. You know, I've seen him sparring down at a, at a foreign Josh, Josh Taylor, because um, I took uh, one of my guys, uh, K Prosper, who's fighting a few, in a few weeks' time in Spain. And they, they were both sparring um, Josh Taylor. And uh, yeah, he just, the guy is just classy. Um, I don't know why he wasn't, he just didn't look himself that night. You know, uh, not sure what went wrong. But I told him, listen, you know, this is boxing. You know, you have to deal with the disappointments. You know, Dillian had to deal with the disappointment and get straight back in there. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what boxing's all about. Some, sometimes, every now and then, it just doesn't go your way. You know, it doesn't. You know, and then you, you, you have to show character. And uh, only the guys that show character actually go on to make it. So, um, you know, Chris can bounce back. He's, he's exceptional. You know, I've always been a fan of Chris's style. Okay. Well, Mr Miller, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Have you got anything else you'd like to add before we finish? Oh, just a quick shout out to my sponsors because even when I was in Portugal for the whole year, these guys like Zab, what do you need? We'll send it out to you. And you know they've always, they've always looked after me for years, even before, you know, um, I became a name. These guys, three, four, five years ago, have always been supporting me. Um, they are uh, Tiger Bay. Um, you know they've been absolutely unbelievable. You know they've been always fully supporting me. Um, Sunit, P, Moobs, they've been great. Um, you know, they've got branches out in. Uh, Kingsbury and Hangar Lane. Also, Ealing Boards and Timber, they, you know, they're in association with them. Bravos is my boxing glove company, Anas. Amazing, always sends me all my gear. Uh, KMT always provides all my apparel. And um, listen, I've just, got, we just, I've just got very, very good people around me. I always have had. And um, you know, regardless of how things go, they're always there to support me. So, um, but yeah, but, and thanks, thanks to you for the interview, man. Appreciate it. Not a problem whatsoever. Well, Zev, um... Enjoy are, you going to back, are you going to back to Spain in three time then? You're coming out as well? Probably so, not at the moment. I've just, um, I'm, I'm avoiding any kind of travel at the minute just because I've, I've just had a baby. I know, obviously. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Congrats, yeah. congrats. Yeah, six weeks old. And um, there's a couple of trips that was coming up that I couldn't go to because of the whole uh, 
some was on the red list and some wasn't. Obviously, I'm doing an isolation at the moment from Gibraltar, but yeah, it's, a, it's, it, it, it's difficult at the minute to get out anywhere, but hopefully yeah. come May, then these travel restrictions uh, will uh, kind of ease off a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going to try and get that job done as well. Uh, well, we'll you know. do. We'll, we'll sort an interview out with. I'll do it through you. We'll sort an interview out with Kay uh, yeah. the week of the fight. I'll make sure that that gets done. No problem, man. But appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Not a problem. All right. All right. Bless Take and, care, uh, man. Take care, man.